Just how religious are celebrities? Some of them, it turns out, ultimately choose to turn their backs on their faith, so we decided to explore some of those cases in greater detail. Keep watching to discover the real reasons these celebs abandoned their churches. Leah Remini's relationship with Scientology is well documented. She served as the host and co-creator of the A&E docuseries Leah Remini, Scientology and the Aftermath, which examined the questionable practices of her former church. Since leaving Scientology, she's gone on record numerous times to criticize the system, and she even wrote a tell-all book. Remini found herself in hot water for questioning the group's leader, David Miscavige, which led to a series of interrogations and so-called security checks. This proved to be the final straw. Remini had been butting heads with church leadership for years leading up to her exit, including questioning the process of excommunicating members. She was also reportedly scolded for asking about Miscavige's wife, Shelley Miscavige, who hasn't been seen in public since 2007. Do you know where, where Shelley Miscavige is now? I do not. In 2013, Remini told People magazine, I believe that people should be able to question things. I believe that people should value family and value friendships and hold those things sacrosanct. That for me, that's what I'm about. It wouldn't matter what it was, simply because no one is going to tell me how I need to think. No one is going to tell me who I can and cannot talk to. Michael Jackson was a devout Jehovah's Witness from the age of five. He performed door-to-door -door witnessing into the early 80s, often wearing a costume to hide his identity as one of the world's biggest celebrities. But his fame and faith clashed in 1983 with the release of his album Thriller. For Jehovah's Witnesses, much of the album's content was questionable, and the video for the title song, in which Jackson turns into a werewolf and dances with zombies, was especially troubling. As a result, Jackson was threatened with disfellowship, so he rejected the video's content. He told the Jehovah's Witness magazine Awake, I realize now it was not a good idea. I'll never do a video like that again. Jackson even added a disclaimer to the video that stated, Due to my strong personal convictions, I wish to stress that this film in no way endorses a belief in the occult. Despite Jackson's efforts, the situation got worse as an MJ cult developed among Jehovah's Witnesses. Leaders condemned celebrity worship and called on the destruction of damaging materials. The rift was ultimately never mended. In 1987, Jackson told his congregation that he no longer wanted to be a Jehovah's Witness. Anne Hathaway had a devout Catholic upbringing, and her faith influenced her career aspirations. In 2011, she told The Independent, When I was younger, I thought about becoming a nun for a while. You know how it is when you're growing up and you're going to be a lot of different things, but I actually wanted to be an actress before I wanted to be a nun. The nun was more of a sidebar thing. But ultimately, a life of faith wasn't in the cards for Hathaway. When her older brother Michael came out of the closet when she was a teenager, the church's antiquated views on homosexuality stood out awkwardly. In 2016, she discussed the current state of her religious affiliation with British GQ, revealing, "...the whole family converted to Episcopalianism after my elder brother came out. Why should I support an organization that has a limited view of my beloved brother? So I'm… nothing. F*** it. I'm forming. I'm a work in progress." Brad Pitt has had several religious changes of heart over the years. In 2007, he told Parade Magazine, I'd go to Christian revivals and be moved by the Holy Spirit, and I'd go to rock concerts and feel the same fervor. Then I'd be told, that's the devil's music, don't partake in that. I wanted to experience things religion said not to experience. Four years later, he struck a somewhat different tone as he told reporters at the Cannes Film Festival, I got brought up being told things were God's way, and when things didn't work out, it was called God's plan. I've got my issues with it, don't get me started. I found it very stifling. In a 2015 interview with The Telegraph, he identified as an atheist and noted that his Baptist upbringing was filled with, quote, all the Christian guilt about what you can and cannot, should and shouldn't do. A few years later, his views had softened as he told GQ in 2019, I cling to religion. I grew up with Christianity. Always questioned it, but it worked at times. Tried a few spiritual things, but didn't feel right. He added, Then I called myself an atheist for a while, just kind of being rebellious. I wasn't really, but I kinda labeled myself that for a while. It felt punk rock enough. And then I found myself coming back around to just belief in, I hate to use the word, spirituality, but just a belief in that we're all connected. 
Rapper Ja Rule's family were devout Jehovah's Witnesses, but his mother was eventually disfellowed from the organization. The strict disfellowship rules bothered the rapper as a young man. In 2014, he told The Breakfast Club, I was living with my grandmother at the time. My mom would get me on the weekends. And then they were like, you're not going to be able to go with your mom on the weekends anymore. He added, I was like, well, that's not going to fly, and I'm leaving here and going to live with my mother. We were kind of like the black sheep. Nobody was dealing with my mother, and that was crazy. Ja Rule and his mother left the sect, and a wedge was driven between them and the rest of the family. It wasn't until his career took off in the 90s that his family reunited. Ultimately, the circumstances didn't matter to Ja Rule, as he was just happy for his mom to have her family back in her life. When Gabriel Byrne was 11 years old, he started seminary training to become a priest. But about five years later, he went to London and discovered that his love for the opposite gender was too strong to ignore. As he told The Guardian in 2010, We got on the bus and I walked up the stairs behind two girls in miniskirts. That was the end of it for me. While this moment made him fall out of love with the seminary, it was a traumatic experience that pushed him even further away as he experienced abuse while he was still a child. As he explained to The Guardian, I didn't think it severely impacted me at the time, but when I think about my later life and how I had difficulties with certain issues, there is the real possibility they could have been attributable to that. Nowadays, Byrne isn't in a hurry to introduce his own children to the church. As he told the Irish Times in 2013, I have come to the conclusion that the Catholic Church is a force for evil. In 2008, the controversial ballot proposition known as Proposition 8 was passed in the California state elections. The success of the proposition, which sought to ban same-sex marriages, was largely led by the support of churches in the state. Among those who supported the proposition was a staff member of the Church of Scientology's San Diego chapter. This led filmmaker Paul Haggis to write to Tommy Davis, the chief spokesperson for the Church of Scientology International. Haggis wrote to Davis for 10 months, finally sending one last letter on August 19, 2009. As Haggis saw it, public sponsorship of Proposition 8 is a stain on the integrity of our organization and a stain on us personally. Our public association with that hate-filled legislation shames us. As Haggis received no communication back from Davis or the church, he signed off his final missive with, Silence is consent, Tommy. I refuse to consent. I hereby resign my membership in the Church of Scientology. I can't be part of an organization that doesn't support human rights for everyone. Miley Cyrus's views on religion and spirituality aren't strictly defined, but what is clear is that she's no longer a member of a church anymore, which she discussed during an episode of her Instagram live show, Bright Minded. I was raised going to church as a believer, and that was a really important part of my life, and I kind of fell off that path a little bit. Cyrus added that she had a difficult time finding a relationship with God that worked for her as an adult. She further explained, I was also brought up in the church in Tennessee at a time in the 90s, so it was a less accepting time with all that. I had some gay friends in school. That is the reason why I kind of left my church. They weren't being accepted. They were being sent to conversion therapies. And I had a really hard time with that. And I had a hard time with me finding my sexuality too. Cyrus did note, however, that if she could successfully find her own relationship with God as an adult, she would be far less turned off from the idea of religion. Whenever George Clooney is asked about his religious past, he seems to recall it mostly with pride. For example, in 2006, he told the Catholic Herald, I was brought up with the whole bit, Catholic school, confession every week, everything. You certainly learned discipline, and I grew up with a great sense of structure and respect. But his beliefs and his commitment to the Catholic Church ultimately diminished as he got older. In 1997, he told the Washington Post, I don't believe in heaven and hell. I don't know if I believe in God. All I know is that as an individual, I won't allow this life, the only thing I know to exist, to be wasted. In a 2006 interview on Larry King Live, Clooney spoke about his changing faith while managing to remain diplomatic on the matter. As he put it, I'll tell you what's tricky about this. In talking about religion, if you're well known, anything you say sort of ticks off a bunch of other people and sort of attacks their belief. He added, So I always try to say that I, first and foremost, I think that whatever anybody believes, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone else, it's fair enough and works. And I think it's real and matters. I don't happen to have those beliefs as much. I don't believe in those things. 
At one point in her life, Katy Perry appeared destined for a gospel singing career. When she was 13, she traveled to Nashville to record an album, following in the footsteps of her musical hero, Amy Grant. As she told Vogue in 2013, Amy Grant was our Madonna. We knew about Madonna and Marilyn Manson in my family because we picketed their concerts. Perry's entire childhood was dedicated to church. As she described it to Vogue, my house was church on Sunday morning, church on Sunday night, church on Wednesday evening. You don't celebrate Halloween. Jesus gives you your Christmas presents. We watch Bill O'Reilly on TV. That was my whole childhood and youth and early teens. I still have conditioned layers dropping off of me by the day. As Perry grew up, she ultimately grew away from her religious upbringing. In 2013, she told Marie Claire, I don't believe in a heaven or a hell or an old man sitting on a throne, but I still feel like I have a deep connection with God. Perry's mother, though, has been a little disappointed to see her daughter go this way. As the singer told Vogue Australia, My mom has prayed for me my entire life, hoping I'd come back to God. I never left him. I was just a little bit secular. I was more materialistic and more career-driven. But now that I'm in my 30s, it's more about spirituality and heart wholeness. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.